Katie Cubs, what's brewing? Welcome back to the channel. Um, <laughs> so, Chantelle's been busy. Chantelle's been a busy little bee. She's been a busy little beezer, quite frankly. Um, a lot went on. I didn't have time to cover it. I didn't have time to watch some of it even. I kind of got the highlights and that was it because, ha, huh, we are about to finish work for a short holiday. I'm booked to go to Dubai on Friday. I've got three meetings scheduled on top of my regular day tomorrow and um, tomorrow and the next day I'm going to be busy just getting ready to go. So I want to get this out for you guys because I know content has been a little bit spare on this channel as I've gotten busier and um, there's probably going to be no content while I'm actually in Dubai. I might end up vlogging while I'm there but uh, I, if I do I probably won't be uploading it until I get uh, until I get back unless I super need the space uh, and need to delete the video files in which case we'll see. I haven't actually decided if I'm going to do vlogs or not, but we'll see. Probably I will, but I'm not sure. I don't want to promise anything to you if I'm not sure. I haven't really been keeping up with her this week because I've been so busy and she's been online so much, so much, you guys. Uh, we were going through that arc of uh, we're broken up and I was like, I'm, I'm waiting to see where this goes because man, we did have a pre-recorded video saying Oh, um, trying to get out of a toxic relationship and it had exactly the same vibe as the last time she did a pre-recorded video of this nature in that she went live almost directly afterwards within very short time period after and she can't run her pre-recorded videos with her lives sort of side to side like that concurrently. It just doesn't work because she treats the pre-recorded like catch-ups like she's been away for a while and she's taken a break and she's summarizing what's happened as if people don't then go and watch her lives. And some people don't. Some people will just stumble upon this channel later and maybe look at the pre-recorded content, perhaps. But it used to be that people would have a catch up, but it's almost like she's two different people. And she purposely is trying to be like when she's doing pre-recorded, she's on, she's influencer Chantel. And this is what's been happening. And uh, when she's not, we just get the live Chantel, which is everything else. And um, never the twain shall meet. And unfortunately, for her at least, that's not how people work. We look at that content and we're like, well, this is pretty different. We actually know what's going on. And uh, it just, it makes it very difficult to watch the pre-recorded content. Because even though it's shorter and it is, it is already done, it's not live. So it should be easier to consume our knowledge around the situation and about the context and having the lives running with them make it very difficult to engage with. So we had a lot of the lives this week. Um, she had one, I caught it, I keep at different points in the last two days, I've been like, download this live because I'll react to it. And by the time I've gone back to react to it, there's been another two or three lives there. And I'm just like, oh, I can't, mm, no, there's no time. There's no time, I can't do that. Uh, but there was one live I caught at one point and at the very end of it, I can't remember which one it was guys, I'm sorry. At the very end of it, she just cut it off super fast. She started getting angry and blocking people. It was when she uh, confessed to deleting Nada's five and a half hour live, which by the way, when she said like, I don't lie and this is what I do. She said that he was mad because he trusted her with, with his password and then seconds, uh, like seconds before she had said, oh, I don't have his password, it was just signed in. And I'm like, well then how are you? That's not true. That's not true because she was caught in Bay Nation's live accidentally using Nada's account. And then she switched back to the Foodie Beauty account and was like, sorry guys, I was signed into Nada's to do his editing. And she does all her editing on a phone. She has that program she bought. So she would have had to be signed in on her phone and she said she was signed in on her phone, but she signed out to answer Bay Nation. Now, yes, she could have gone back and edited another video after because I can't remember the timeline exactly. But if he's then angry saying, I trusted you with my pass uh, password and this is what you did, then clearly she has his password. Like, hi, she has his password. Now, it was a shitty thing to do to delete the live, but more than just a shitty on a human kind of level of, you don't do that to people because frankly they've been shittier to each other than this like it seemed a really odd choice for her because she is uh dependent on her youtube income and so setting the precedent that 
okay, it's okay to go in and do this, even if I'm acting like I'm sorry for it, which is clearly not that sorry. And having spent the day upset because he threatened to delete her channel, it seemed like such an odd choice. I mean, I suppose she was just the little lizard brain part of her that goes, no, do now, feelings bad, do now, hurt. Like that part, so like the very, very base part of us that, that speaks in short words and likes to hit things, that's in all of us to an extent. That part of her was just like, he was gonna do this, delete it, because I'm angry. And she holds up I'm impulsive as a reason for that, but seems to think admitting she's impulsive absolves her of any responsibility of the action she takes impulsively, which is simply not the case. I have to take a sip of coffee. I don't actually want to drink it, but guys, I was editing this on my couch over there and I fell asleep. I had like an enforced grandpa nap where you sit down and you wake up 20 minutes later. I am tired. Anyway, moving on. So she had a live at some point and I just remember being a bit surprised because she was like getting quite worked up because people were not supportive. I think she thought because they hate him, they'd be more supportive of her. And then she was getting quite a lot of flack for it. But out of nowhere, she went from angry to super upset and just cut the live off immediately. And the comment that seems to have caused it was this one by the man with the beautiful, uh, the beautiful username. Uh, you know what you did was wrong, so you have uh, become immediately defensive. Just put the video back up. And it just completely broke her down immediately. She was like, okay, I'm getting emotional. I'm going to turn the line off. Bye. And a little bit punish your audience for making me feel bad, but a lot of it just, it hit her and it hit her hard. And I think they're not seeing each other at the moment, even though she's admitted they have been in contact since. I believe that they're not whatever version of together or not together they claim to be or not be. I don't believe they are it now, which is unfortunately the best way you can put that, which doesn't that just say everything? But whatever it is, they don't seem to be doing this particular dance at the moment. But I think the reason she got so upset about that was because, uh, because she saw the truth in it. Because deleting his video might have actually been a lie. I think part of her, in her impulsiveness, because it's funny how she can be impulsive when it benefits her and kind of satisfies her, but less so in other things. You know, she is an impulsive person for sure. She has very little self-control or a kind of delayed gratification, an understanding of delayed gratification. I'd say she has absolutely none. She, she deleted it because she thought it would hurt. But also I think it was a way to force contact because I think she was worried and I think this hit home because, excuse the weird cut, I started coughing. I think this hit home because um, it, it may have been the line that she can't choose to recover from. Because if he's now fed up with her and he's kind of not talking to her, if he chooses to end it, she can't do anything about that at all. And she is, she's done some pretty cringy things to get back with him, even as she's claiming, but no, no, no. Like she's been driving him to his friend's house and when she's like, oh, I said, I don't want to be alone after they had gone through the breakup. And I was like, oh, oh, the female part in me that recognizes all other females on this world just cringe and died. That part. Sorry, this hasn't really been about bees in so far. We're getting there, I swear. <laughs> Try to do like a very quick, these were just the points that came up during the mass of live streams that is currently blurring together in my head. I can't think of any other points at the moment, but they may come up during the straight react. So that was just something I wanted to mention. She came back with another one saying, I'm good now. I don't think I saw all of that one. She is actually live as I currently sit and film this with some uh, bean, bean bees, the, the coffee thing she's trying to do in the morning. Um, I turned it on and we were in her hand or somewhere in a coffee shop and that, that's all I really saw. So if something happens there, I guess we'll find out. Let's get into the straight react for the moment. I've cut down Just Sane's version of events because the only point I really wanted to address was the money because she's been talking more about it just recently. Uh, so that's what she was covering mainly in this clip show. So I've cut it down to about 10 minutes and uh, I've, been, I've been waffling for a while. So let's get going.
got the job interview tomorrow. Oh, really? Yeah. Tomorrow? Yeah. What time? Three o'clock. Okay. So not too early? Yeah. Are you nervous? Yeah, a little bit. Did you tell people about it? Yep. Did you tell them what kind of job? Yep. That's cool. Yeah, comic shop in Toronto, so see if it's even something I want to take. Yeah, yeah. It's probably expensive to live in. Well, unless, like I said, you have to move into Toronto Arms. So this thing about Pete's getting a new job, it seems an odd thing to do. If it's a case of, I don't want to belittle the job because I think it's something he'd actually really enjoy. I don't think it'd be a bad job for him. And I don't think any job is a bad job to have. I think if you, if you work, you work and that's fantastic. Uh, but it seems really strange that he would move out of a major city to another very expensive major city to work in a comic book store. Like, I'm assuming there are comic book stores in his current city and it'd be cheaper to live. Or does he just want the change? I mean, I'm guessing he's been looking around and he's just going for what he can. And if he doesn't mind moving, then that's up to him. But it seems like a pressure that he doesn't need to put on himself to say, I'm going to move to an even more expensive city when I'm currently living outside of my means, being supported by my friend in this cheaper city. It was an odd choice for me. But that being said, I'm really happy that he's looking into another job, that he's got an opportunity, that he's got an interview. And, you know, as much as I'm not sure about the choice of where it is, I hope he gets it. Um, one, because it will booster his confidence with, um, I don't know what I was going to say then, the confidence wasn't what was coming out of my brain then. He's going to bolster his confidence with um, other interviews if he decides to keep going with the interview process uh, in other places. And two, even if he takes it and he has to kind of figure things out, he can do that and it will give him a chance to break off from Foodie. I would be interested, Foodie seemed quite surprised there, I would be interested to see how she'd react now, theoretically with her not having Nada as a backup, or having Pete as a backup. I don't know which way I'd, I'd do that, to be honest. I think both terrible things, but in different ways theoretically assuming she doesn't get back together with Nada, which is a massive assumption i realize that would mean she'd be by herself and i don't think she functions very well like that so interesting plot point if it happens any cute ladies in toronto i want, want you to first want to be a sugar mommy oh. pete don't be that guy don't be that creepy guy also the use of the word sugar mommy instead of sugar mama i don't know makes it even more juvenile and creepy. Please, please don't be this guy. Actually, MG clearly wants to be my sugar mama. She don't, she gives me enough super chats. Who? Uh, MG. Mm. First mention of the word super chats, it becomes relevant. Mm. He gives me loads of super chats. Yes, because I said I'm not talking about Nader anymore, so I'm not going to. She, she does in fact talk about him later. And how many times have we heard I'm not gonna talk about Nada? How many times? Can you blame people for really thinking you're going to considering you have every other time? <laughs> remember when I was, remember the other night? I said, from now on, I'm not talking about him. I remember, and I took it with the enormous pinch of salt. I take everything else you do. So, so if you're not home, where have you been? Well, Patsy, I have a life. And there's the doubt in terms of the Nada stuff. She's been going live a ton, so she may not have been at his, but I mean, where the fuck else is she gonna go, really? She talks about, oh, I won't spoil that in a minute, but um, we'll get on to this as a conversational point in terms of having other people in her life, I suppose. But uh, she, she doesn't have much of a life outside of this. We see everything and she's admitted as much, even though she's not doing it right now. So if she were going anywhere, even if she didn't show the people on camera, she would have mentioned it before now or she would have mentioned it after if it was unexpected. She didn't, which means that she just he just didn't know where she was and she doesn't want to explain. Why don't you look into getting your IG pack? I am going to clean cheeseburgers. Just like I haven't done a million things I'm going to do, mm -hmm. I have to look into getting my IG back. Yeah, I do. I'm not sure what was going on with her IG. I heard a rumour that he had taken her passport, he being Nada, had done something with her password. I keep trying to say passport instead of password because I've got travel on the brain. If I slip and do that, apologies. Um, I don't know if that's true. She could also have just locked herself out of her account. She could have been hacked. Mess. So these things do happen, but um, I, I don't know why she wouldn't try and sort it out. She was getting so gung-ho about, 
oh, I'm putting pictures up on Instagram, which makes me think maybe there's more to the story, but but sometimes we overcomplicate things when the answer can very simply just be drawn down to the common denominator of she's just like that. Kids have missed you, I think. Yes, well, we're not boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> And that laugh, Pete's missed you, which is, you know, a nice thing to say. Uh, well, we're not boyfriend and girlfriend. Because nobody else other than the person I'm currently fucking deserves any kind of consideration. Not friends, not family, nobody. We're not fucking, get out of my face. What's all over the floor? Probably gravy or something, I don't know, something spilled, I gotta wash my floor. Oh, I didn't realise I cut that, there was a horrible, the, the house is a hole. Something spilled out the, out of the trash, I think. Yeah, so it's now smeared all over her floor and she just left mm. it. Do it later. Just live in the filth until then. I don't want a Christmas. I might Christmas decorate. I don't know. And not before. I don't know. I don't feel like doing Christmas shit. Are you going to buy a Christmas tree? I don't know. Maybe I should. Maybe it would be nice to be festive. But... I think so, yeah. I mean, we're at what? The 23rd of November? Do the thing. I mean, I know it's different for Americans because you have Thanksgiving and I guess you get through Thanksgiving and then it's Christmas, I suppose. Um, in England, we don't really have any November holidays except for uh, at the very beginning, November 5th, we have bonfire night, Guy Fawkes night. And uh, after that, it's kind of full steam ahead for the holiday season because you get sort of Halloween and bonfire night in quite rapid succession. And then, uh, then it's a free zone and you can do what you want. I know people who put up their tree beginning of November, which is a bit early for me. I tend to say, okay, anything after the 1st of December, go for it. That can, I consider that Christmas season and then take it down by probably January. Is it the 6th that's the epiphany? That, that feels like about the time. But uh, if you like to put up your decorations early, I know it's been a point of contention with some, but if you like to put your decorations up early, I'm of the belief, dude, it's the plague times. If Christmas brings you joy, you get to have as much Christmas as you want. You go for it. Are you mad if you told about the money? No, I mean, I don't like people knowing our financial business, obviously. Okay, so the money. A while ago, I don't know the amount, and someone in the community will know. Somebody please let me know down below if you know the figure. But a while ago, Pete did a couple of live streams on her channel, just him and people sent him super chats and she said, okay, when I get paid for them, I'll pay him for them. No problem. And then Pete revealed on a recent live stream that she hadn't done that, that she had paid him some of the money and that he would get the rest later and he didn't think she was gonna cheat him out of it. And I actually don't think so either, but that doesn't make what she's doing right. So, you know, it's a conversation we'll have in a second. He doesn't seem too concerned, which is up to them. But at the same time, he's not a confrontational person in general when it comes to her, certainly. And if she's got the money and she's saying, no, it's a bad idea for you to have it now, or no, you need to do this. I can't see him arguing too hard. So that feels like quite an unequal power dynamic in this particular regard, because if she's holding the money, he doesn't have control of it. And, you know, it, it just didn't seem right to me. But let's continue with her justifications and we'll talk some more. I mean, who the hell would? But... Um, oh, and that was the other thing. I don't like people knowing our financials, obviously. You are the one who puts everything online. You, you personally. Like, now that Pete has his own channel, I don't watch his channel generally, but now that he has his own channel, she's got slightly less control there. But for most of the financial arc, what we know of it, has come from her. You don't like it online? Stop putting it online. Um, he's gonna get his money, okay? It's like, I'm supporting a fucking thousand people right now. I know Nado's not one of them. <laughs> I have some- Nado who we're definitely not talking about. One of my family struggling, a couple of people in my family struggling, and then Pete until he gets some of his YouTube- I'm sure all of these people appreciate uh, being put on blast. Too money. The good thing is though, once he does get paid, um, stop supporting. If she's saying Pete needs money and needs support, why is she withholding his super chats? Super chats are his YouTube money. Give him his money. People, I know, it's just, well, I, I, that's how I am. Like, I can't watch people I care about in my life struggle. I can't. I will, be, um, I will starve. That's I'm not, not that, I'm mm. not starve. But if I mm. had to, I would starve or go without something. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't think 
so. No, I don't think so. When have you ever gone without? And I'm not digging about food or weight or anything here. Just in general, any part of her life, when has she voluntarily gone without for the sake of somebody else? Because I can't think of a single example. And she's had time where she's done something altruistic, when she's come in and she's taken her grandma somewhere. I know grandma's a sore subject right now, but we have seen times when she's taken people places or done a thing. We could pick out isolated examples within her YouTube history of that happening. But something that does anything other than minorly inconvenience her? No. Give up something for some? No. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. No name chips doesn't count. I don't think so. I thought a lush face mask. I'm just kidding. And actually, e.g. my Toronto trip was actually his super chat money would have just been on this paycheck. So my Toronto trip was a different paycheck. Is that true? The cutoff date is the first or the second of the month, something like that. I think it kind of all ratifies on the first and so generally by the second it's turned over. It used to be the third and it seems to have gotten slightly earlier. When was the Toronto trip? I feel like something in the timeline is screwed there. Probably pricey. Yeah, Serena. But I got like some videos out of it and yeah. I wonder how much she made on those videos versus how much she spent doing the trip, renting the thing, doing the hotel room. That's definitely, as a YouTuber, that's something you have to consider. I'd be interested to know how much she made versus how much she spent because what she got out of that trip, she got like three videos, but they didn't seem to do that well, partly because of the reasons I mentioned earlier where they seem very false and partly because we all hate Nada and she refused to edit him out of it. Uh, I mean, I'm okay. We're okay financially. It's just... <laughs> Are you though? Let's see. We're going to forego animals. Well... <laughs> I mean, obviously, if I really had to. I prefer not to, but... Okay, so she spends a lot on edibles. Maybe you could argue not as much as she did. Like, you could argue that. But she spends a lot. I mean, she crammed, like, ten edibles in her face in one of these live streams and then was just, oh, oh, so high. So high. Oh, it was ridiculous. But she doesn't... Um, I was going to say eat. She doesn't consume the government version, the weaker version. So she's paying a fair bit. I remember tallying up a haul she did once and it being like five or six hundred dollars Canadian. And I had gone to the websites to look up all of the uh, prices for that. Now, I don't know how her current hauls um, compare to that, but she goes through it quite quick. Even if she's lessened it slightly, she goes through it quite quick and it's not a cheap habit. So she's still spending a fair bit of money on that. So to not give Pete his money doesn't seem correct when you're like, she is not frugal in any sense. She's very excessive. And you could argue in as much as it's her money, she can spend it on what she wants, but quite wasteful in what she uh, chooses to spend it on. Now, like I said, it's her money. If she wants to spend her money on anything she gets to, but the super chats weren't her money, and there seems to have been some crossover here because how she's spending her money doesn't quite seem to be covering everything. And that's down to her choices. And that definitely is somewhere she could trim the financial fat. I mean, you guys see myself spoil myself all the time. I'm not yeah, sure. we I'm do. Not... So why aren't you giving money to Pete? Why can't you cover that when it wasn't your money to begin with? This is the problem. We do see you spoil yourself all the time. So if financially you're fine, if you spoil yourself all the time, if you can afford edibles, if you can afford the thousands of dollars you spend on food, why can't you afford to cover however much the super chats were? Bear in mind, she said recently in DMs, or at least we believe, that she earned like 12 grand or something Canadian the other month. So she makes a lot of money. That may not have been normal. She seemed a little bit surprised, but... Even with her more regular level, I could believe 10. Because her VIBs is maybe stagnating, her memberships may be quite stagnant. They're going up a little bit at the moment. But that is solid income coming in. And before she had memberships, she was still living very well. 
and the memberships are five dollars a piece so even if she isn't growing her memberships at the moment she's got a decent amount even if they don't come back she's got a decent amount so that's immediately another two or three grand on top of whatever she was doing and she's still live streams she still has a base audience for live streams even when she's got so many of them so it just doesn't make sense to sit here defending no no we're fine i don't think they're that fine but i don't see how they can't be because even with the excessive spending she makes a lot of money like uh i spoil myself too so it's not like i can be like i have nothing and i give everything for everybody <laughs> it's not like that but i am super close to my family i don't talk about it or i mean uh you don't talk about it because that's straight up lie. Mm -mm. No, I, I absolutely refuse. I realize I'm not sitting in a living room with her. I don't know her family. Based on the evidence we've seen, I refuse to believe it. And she's about to cite, oh, I've done vlogs with my family. She has been, I wouldn't say close. I'd say her grandma, she saw slightly more regularly. I wouldn't say she's ever really been close to her family based on the stories she's told. She used to be a little closer than I think she is now. I think now things are very frayed and uh, quite tense, I would imagine, within the family matrix. But she, she used to see them occasionally and used to vlog. But you could see the effort she was going with to try and interact because she's socially quite awkward when she was with them. So I wouldn't say that she was ever super close. So, <laughs> there's that. <laughs> it is what it is. KG, do you think it's sensible for Peace to take a super chat money and buy a computer with it with it right now instead of helping out with bills or what? Like, why don't you mind your own financial business? First of all, excuse you with that attitude. Who the hell are you talking to your members like that? You're paying members who are paying your bills, literally paying your bills. One of the things that people like to throw at reactors all the time is, hey, we can say what we want because we're paying your bills. And I'm sitting here, most of us reactors are sitting here going, yeah, no, you're not. It's a hobby. <laughs> you know? But for Chantel, yeah, this is her income. Her, her beezers do actually pay her bills. The money she gets for them does. It seems quite urgently pay her bills and to say that, and again she said no we're fine no there's no problem and then it's like do you think he should be buying a computer instead of helping out with bills well the reason he doesn't help out is because you moved him into an apartment that he knew he couldn't afford and you said don't worry i'll take care of it so you don't get to put him in that situation and then when you receive money that is not yours you are the caretaker of that money to give it to him yeah, you are transit for the money. And then you start guilting him out with, oh, you want a new computer? Do you really think that's a good idea? I mean, our bills, our bills have been pretty steep this month. And she did mention in one of the previous lives, um, her, her electricity or her water, her water had gone from like 70 to $400. And she was like, I don't shower, why? And I was sitting there like, go and check with the fucking office. If my bill went to five times the amount, I would want an answer. Go talk to your office and find out. But no, we'll just sit and pay it because it's better to sit and throw money at it even when apparently we don't have the money but apparently we're fine rather than actually make the effort to get it fixed. And I can imagine this tone right here being exactly how she looks at Pete's. Like, oh yeah, you know the rent I pay for you? Oh yeah, you know, come help me with that time work, pay, you know, make up for your half of the rent. She has no problem just slapping him in the face with that whenever it's convenient. But no, no guys, my friend for 20 years, I'd never do that for him. I can't stand the thought of people going, I'm just, I'm so emotive. I'm, I, just, I can't stand it. But this, this has no consideration. She is financially generous in some ways, but she does it as a way to plug up other emotional holes in relationships and she thinks okay no well i threw some money at it that should that should equalize any any gaps anywhere else because look i did a thing and it doesn't work that way and she's holding those purse strings and she's using them and it wasn't fair because it's not her money to make the decision with and if she needs that money to cover bills 
then all of this, oh no, we're fine crap, is bullshit to begin with. And how it's bullshit, I don't, like, 12 grand, 12 grand in a month, how are you needing his money to cover your bills? How are you needing that? You don't get to decide what he does with his money, and it's his money. <laughs> well, fuck. It's true. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, I know I'm bitchy, but do I not have, like, some... Does it not make sense? No, it doesn't. Because it wasn't your money to decide with. He doesn't owe you the bills because you said he didn't need to, and you don't get to take that back when he doesn't have the choice of moving out. If you had wanted him to contribute and said, look, I'll pay the rent, but I need you to contribute to these, then number one, go and find out why your bills have gotten so much bigger because Pete doesn't deserve to pay for your excess if you blocking up the drain or you doing something else has caused your bills to be higher. And even if it's an outside problem, both of them need to man up and be an adult about it because it's $400 when it should be 70. And that doesn't make sense to me. Oh yeah, but I don't sleep enough, I'm a freaking bitch. I don't, but I'm just a bitch, like, often, so. I was gonna say, we're getting more and more to the point where the planets have to align in a very particular way for her to not be a bitch. So at some point you should consider that's maybe just you. You know, it's a thing. You guys know, you wait for it. We don't have to wait, wait very long. Thing, I know, I have to wait for it to kick in now. So make it, watch when it kicks in, it'll be super nice. Hi. No, I'm not gonna keep the live money. He's gonna, he's gonna get his money going to get not has which should be the case right now <laughs> uh, why do i talk about my life on here good question why i good don't question. want to nobody's got a gun to your head somebody's got a pocketbook your bank needs its income you talk because of the money this is the trade-off you made in your life what's the thing right now i don't feel like talking about shit get off line <laughs> get off line i don't feel like talking about shit don't go live. You are how many minutes into this live at this point? Don't go live. You've been live a dozen times. And yes, I do take care of Pete's, okay? He has money to order whatever food he wants. I paid his credit card bill. I gave him money for bills. Paid all the rent. All the bills. So why did you keep his money? Wait, wait, guys. <laughs> we talk about gaslighting. She paid his credit card bill, which she doesn't need to do. Pete is an adult, he should be able to pay it himself. But, if, if she's saying she did, so is it right for him to buy a new computer when he should be helping with bills right now? I would argue, no, take the money. He's obviously doing fine on his phone and he's got a computer. Take the money and pay off some of your credit card debt would be probably a better answer. But if we're not gonna be entirely sensible about it, that's okay, it's up to him. But it is up to him, not up to you. But you said, no, I'll give him a thousand. Uh, I think she said she gave him a thousand um, to, to cover whatever it was, to cover some. He gave some of the Super Chat money anyway. But she just said she paid the bills. She paid the rent, she paid the bills, she gave him extra money. She cleaned out his cage. She put a water down, fresh fur fresh hay on the floor you know little hamster she keeps in the cage hopefully not in the kfc drawer like it feels a bit like a pet relationship when she talks about it it really does but she's saying she paid the bills so did you need his money for that or did you not need it are you this sugar mama figure who's just throwing thousand dollars everywhere and he's absolutely fine and everything's covered or did you take part of his super chat money to pay those bills because those two things don't add up so i know that's why i'm not blaming you guys i'm just saying i put it out there i'm mad at myself because sometimes so i don't stop feel like it. fucking updating or talking about shit that i don't want to talk stop about. going live and i don't begrudge helping him i'm not saying that you seem to begrudge it a little bit he's helped me out a lot too and i don't mind helping him it's not that you're not helping him you're taking his money with i mean without his yeah without his consent he didn't say, he didn't offer, no, keep my money. You went to him and said, I'll give you the rest next time. And I don't know, like I wish him well in his, his interview and I don't know, I think it would be cool. I think, you know what, actually he might be able to make it in Toronto if he goes, rents like Toronto Arms apartment and he has his YouTube money and his job, he might be able to. 
I don't know what Toronto Arms is. I'm guessing it's some kind of cheaper version of housing. I'm guessing the way she's talking about it. But I would not, especially considering the appeal of Pizza's channel for a lot of people is the fact that he's an orbiter of hers. So with the distance of him moving to Toronto, that's going to be far less of a feature on his channel, which means there's going to be a waning interest. Some will stay for the content because there's, there's content out there for everybody and some people might genuinely like watching him. But if he's going to need YouTube income and he's going to need his job, which he's going to be doing, so he's going to be tired, so I'm guessing he's not going to be doing as much YouTube, which means his income will go down anyway, even without that as a mitigating factor, he might make it. Do not put yourself in the financial position where you're relying on a few very variable things in order to be able to make rent. That seems like a terrible idea because she seems to be talking a little bit like, well, I'll snap my fingers and in six months he'll be making the money I make because I don't think that's the case. Actually, please don't say my name. I pay the rent and I've pretty much mostly always paid the rent here. So yeah, that was the agreement. Yeah, it's technically under his name, but I don't know technically under his name but you know guys i have the power here yeah that was the agreement what's the point you're making resident here and i pay the rent so shh. so shh. so shh. i'm so cool i have to steal half my roommate's money from super chats because i can't cover my own bills on 12 grand a month so shh. and actually i did that put it under his name mostly just so that people would and because my old apartment was under my name and still technically i guess it is because you can't change it and BB's still living there, so... That doesn't seem correct to me. I have limited experience renting apartments. I rented an apartment in China, but um, that was all in Mandarin. I had someone helping me with that. And most of the places I, I work provide apartments. So, like the one in China that I rented, part of the, the contract was an allowance to help me rent that. So it, it was one of those exceptions where I had to get it myself, but mostly they're included. The apartment I'm in now is included in my job. I did rent when I was in university, but the way she's describing this, I asked my friend in Canada, but she's at work right now, so she hasn't been able to answer. So I don't know. I can believe that she's ignorant on the matter. I'm also kind of ignorant on this particular matter, but I can believe she maybe doesn't know what she's talking about here and is just sort of guessing things she's vaguely heard. And I can also imagine she didn't go through proper channels to try and change things over. So she probably just left and was like, eh, I don't know, they'll figure it out. I'd be interested to see what was going on there because it didn't make a lot of sense to me. I'm still on that lease. No, Pizza's gonna have his money, don't worry. Pizza's getting his money and more. Mm, getting, hasn't gotten, getting. <sighs> okay, well, help his credit. Oh, really, does that help credit if you pay you like rent under his name? I mean, if you have any debt that you're making regular consistent payments on, it shows you as capable of making regular consistent payments, which does help credit scores and things, but... Macbeth, this is like super chats people sent for him, like before he had his own chin. Yeah, I don't know, like, I don't know why we even talk, need to talk about our finances, you know? Doesn't like the accountability here. Doesn't like it at all. Huh? It will die down with his views after a while. You think so? I think... Yes, I think. If he does live streams and things... Again. Foodie, whatever you might think of her, has a de very different pull on her audience than Pete's does. They will not have the same channels. I think he should do like a Ramona arc instead of talking about Star Wars. <laughs> I don't think he should do that at all. One, I don't think it's particularly great content. And two, the reason it does well on her channel is because it's, it's them doing something and standards are incredibly low on her channel. Building his own channel, yeah. He can't bring her into it because he's going to have exactly the problem he's having, which is his audience is going to be built around her audience, not his own draw. And I know his own draw is perhaps a little tenuous, but if he built his channel up on sort of sci-fi content or on other things that he cares about, he could sustain his own channel, but he'd have to go for slow growth and he'd have to perhaps... Oh, that's going to sound a bit mean. Maybe I don't I wanted to say perhaps have a better personality, but I didn't quite mean it like that. I realise how terrible that sounds. But there's a certain amount of engagement you've got to have with your 
audience and he doesn't always draw people in in that way but that is something you can learn you can learn to be more comfortable with the camera you can learn to express yourself better it comes with practice and he could practice and he could improve his channel and he could build his own community around the interests that he loves just because she it seems bored by them doesn't mean he couldn't do that i mean i understand people sent him super chats i'm not going to steal his money I think there's an audience out there for everyone, but his is mostly just people who watch you. I agree. I see you guys are waiting to see if he'll spill tea. Mm-hmm. I just gave him a thousand dollars today. Yep, and apparently it wasn't all his super chat money, so maybe don't flex on it. Okay. I don't actually know what his super chat money was. She might be making the point that she paid his credit card bill. But you don't get to say, I'm gonna pay for this, here you go and then pull it back and be like, so now you owe me and I'll give you this money later. Either you give it as a gift and you do it without strings or you guys have an arrangement where he pays the amount he's comfortable with, which is what you said you had, or you give him his sodding money. Or more. He has a freaking credit card, which he can order whatever the fuck he wants for food on it. Well, that's kind of the problem, isn't it? His credit card is stacking up. <laughs> From the sound of it. <laughs> I swear to God. No, there's not gonna be another crying live stream. <laughs> time stamp it that i can say i just had to transfer it over because my memory card is getting a little bit full <laughs> which tells me i've been talking about this for too long so let's try and get through this last few minutes a little bit faster shall we don't don't mm, super chat me for things specifically from now on if you want your money to go somewhere because i'm not going to refund you so super chats are non-refundable fyi if you're sending a super chat you have to accept that my money is going to whatever I want it to go to. Uh, whatever. If I want to eat shit with it, I'm going to eat shit with it. If I want to buy edibles with it, I'm going to buy them. If I want to pay my rent, I'm going to pay my rent. She wants to pay Nada's rent, she's going to pay Nada's rent. Actually, as much as her delivery makes me think she's got a very punchable face, this is a point I wouldn't argue with. If you don't want your money to go into supporting all the things you hate to see on her channel, don't send them money. Right? Make decisions because the money's going to her. And what she does with it after, no matter what she says she's doing with it, what she does with it after is her decision. So every time you send a super chat, you're supporting her. Her in a general sense. And she gets to decide what she does with that money. Now, personally, I think that means there should be less of it sent to her but that's my opinion not hers obviously and her audience gets to make that decision so think about it when you make it yeah because this is one thing that she's absolutely right on she gets to make that choice for better or usually for worse so if you're not okay with that don't super chat me give the cats to someone oh well rachel um let's see animal control was here i don't know how many fucking times and they determined that my cats are more than well taken care of so um, I don't know, go to... We'll, we'll talk in a minute, the comment that's about to follow this, but just a point to remind everybody that she spent a literal entire day and night cleaning the absolute filth that filled her house in order for animal control to come. And animal control, from the sounds of things, didn't go exploring most of the house so all the trash that was still in her room in bags but still in her room didn't get seen now she did have boxes everywhere but that's not enough to like take the cats out for so she worked really really hard to get it in a kind of slovenly but but workable space for animal control to come yeah so maybe take care of your fat stepson and stuff it <laughs> <laughs> this is my fat steps on everybody okay so the person who super chatted that if you missed the very beginning because i paused it at an unfortunate time sorry she said so why don't you go and look after your fat ste uh, stepson i don't know how she knows this kid's stepson i don't know how she uh or what she's referring to or or if it's something they know between them but foodie knew immediately upon saying it that she had gone way too fucking far because although she's incredibly rude to her vibs there are points at which you go hey madam 
And that was a point she recognized immediately and she grabbed the cat and she laughed. She's like, oh, I'm just kidding. She really was not kidding and you can tell. And she dragged the cat into frame and was like, this is mine. <laughs> to try and distract immediately from it because that was not okay and she knew it. Oh, <laughs> good point. <laughs> Laugh at it. Only for animal control visits? Well, okay, you guys have seen how bad my house can be. I've shown it on live stream, so... Yeah. It's nothing new, right? Okay, so is that your defense to animal control? Yeah, I completely cleaned it, but it's nothing new, right? I always do this. Is that better for your animals? I think you should probably just stop talking about this. But... No, it's not true. I've been keeping it pretty clean, actually. Gravy floor would disagree. Oh. And apparently the trash bags that she's had in her room since that cleanup that she never took out have now been put out onto the balcony. Not downstairs the way they're supposed to be. So they're just currently rotting outside her, her window. I want like um, to get some eggplants tomorrow and make bubble gooch. I'm craving it. Yeah, I don't know. As Lambo would say, buy bougie groceries. No, I can't. I need to be responsible. Huh? supposedly 10 to 12 grand a month payday literally here happening now i'm guessing she's been paid because if she gave him a thousand dollars she's obviously just got her money in and she can't afford bougie groceries on this the payday i'm not i'm not discounting the fact that she may be supporting members of her family but she didn't used to have these problems so it's an interesting point to note that that seems to be the level we're at. No, I shouldn't get bougie groceries because I'm meant to be responsible. So is that just the reason she's cutting down on takeout food? Because she's at the point where she can't afford it as frequently? I mean, it's not stopping her. She's still doing this coffee thing every morning, but it's still significantly less than she used to spend. Is that why it's happening? The breadwinner. The homophobic comments? I didn't defend any homophobic comments, I think the Excuse homophobic you. comments are atrocious. That's not when you said when Nada did them. Her, her take on it was everyone's opinion needs to be respected. And everyone's opinion of that opinion was fuck you, we don't respect bigots. And uh, that's, that's where we left that. I don't, I've never seen his channel, like I've vaguely heard of the name, but... Oh, uh, she was talking about Poppy Syntax, who was very clear on his feelings as a gay man uh, about what they had all said and what she was supporting, or very carefully not not supporting, if that makes sense, when she was like, well, everyone's opinion needs to res be respected. No, it doesn't. And when she sits there and she says, you know, oh, they get STDs more easily because they're dirty. It's not an opinion that needs to be respected. Not at all. And her chat was not having this. Oh, even for the VIPs, they were not having it. And they were like, you did say that. You said it multiple times. You kept it going. And you used the R word. And Charlie got, like, they brought it all up. They went for it. No, I didn't defend his comments. Yeah, you did. You said all comments. Oh, you were like, uh, I don't want to say I feel like that. But all comments should be respected. The fuck they should be. I don't agree with them. No, I didn't say that. I mean, everyone should be treated as human regardless of what they believe, but... Oh, so these are some of the comments. You probably can't see it in the corner. I will link Just Saying's video down below if you do want to go... If you do want to go and see exactly what it was about. Um, I might cut it in here, but I can't... It's quite late, so I might be rushing through the edit a little bit, quite frankly. Um, but you can definitely go and see them on, on Just Saying's original video. But uh, they were not, they were like, you defended Negs, um, you defended Nada's homophobic comments, you, you did all of this stuff, and, you're just, and she was like, no, I didn't. Yeah, that's a lie. It doesn't mean I have to agree with what they say. She loves her gays, that's right, you're my favorite gays. Nothing but support this one. Like, oh my God. And then it just kept coming. It just kept coming. You said the R word, you said Charlie Cole, uh, you did, you were probably high so you don't remember, and just, just it kept going. I'm undervaluing you, and it's not with Beezers. 
They're not in your corner. Some of them are. Very few of them are. Even the ones who are positive with you are incredibly toxic in their positivity. They encourage absolutely terrible decisions uh, from her in the name of being liked by her. So they're the ones who will encourage her to take more edibles. They're the ones who will ask for the disgusting body noises. They're the ones who will be like, no, take us purpose. Because they'll do anything to be, to be the special little snowflakes that Chantal likes. Well, I mean, I could react to something if you want. Don't. Not, not something annoying. Actually, not something annoying. I mean, that's really the question, isn't it? Like, she finds everything she doesn't like annoying. So, yeah, I was going to say don't react, but actually, it could be interesting. It could be interesting because generally she doesn't articulate arguments well and she uh, gets emotional very quickly. So watching her try to react to something that requires... So watching her try to react to something in with any kind of eloquence would be um, quite interesting. And I'd, I'd probably watch. React to one of Matter's lives? I wouldn't. Do you I, think... I hated her doing that. I hated it. You privated them all, didn't you? Or... Would you still do YouTube if you didn't get paid? Fuck no. I mean, that's a fair answer. She she gets a lot. I'm not saying she doesn't paint the target or on her own back and then run around going, get me, get me. But um, yeah, I, I for what she takes and, and for what she's giving up to her YouTube lifestyle, I wouldn't do it unless I was getting paid really, really well. I wouldn't make those sacrifices. No. Okay, that's not true. Probably. Because at this point, I'm probably addicted to the attention I get from it. Which is another excellent... Wow, the freeze frame. That, that, that expression <laughs> right there. That's her. Um, but yeah, that she also needs a lot of attention. It does make me wonder, someone asks her, what job would you want? And she says, well, I wouldn't want a regular job. And the thing is, there aren't many other ways she could debase herself so thoroughly for the kind of money she thinks she deserves. And uh, the, there aren't many ways she could make money, this much money, as easily. And she does say, well, I just do porn, I just do whatever. And she always underestimates how hard it is to uh, build a platform. She did recently tell people who were paying to see her YouTube channel, inexplicably paying to see her channel, saying, oh no, join me on Facebook. And in the live that she was currently doing when I started recording this, she was like, I've temporarily deactivated my Facebook. And I was like, oh, no one saw that coming. But you tell people who are paying to see you on this platform to join you on another platform that you're not making money on. And then you wonder why you don't have money. What job would I want? I don't want a, I don't want a regular job, honestly. It's the only way I can cope. Freaking edibles. Yeah, that I sounds swear. healthy. Seems like it. No, I believe you. That's the problem. Oh, YouTube stopped showing dislike counts. Ha <laughs> ha. Such a childish immediate response, but then that's not necessarily a good thing for her. Here's the thing, guys. When we're like, click like if you liked it, click dislike if you didn't, it's because like and dislike equally give you engagement. And more engagement on your video, the more it gets recommended. If you really want to sink a channel, stop going to the channel. That's the way it works, you know? So if the more engagement a, a video has, the more it gets recommended. Now, they're not stopping people from being able to dislike it, so it may not affect it, but they're stopping the public from being able to see it. She'll still see it in the back end, but disliking a video is not as powerful uh, an insult as you would think, because it does nothing but benefit the creator. I swear, when I think about it more now, I get way more dislikes than likes. And I don't yep. even as somebody who does that, I just think it's like, let people fucking dislike. What, why, what's the point of getting rid of them? Like, what's the point? Again, I don't think, I might be wrong, I'll have to go check it. I don't think they're getting rid of dislikes. I think they're just getting rid of the ability to see them. Honestly, like, people have to, like, click the video to click dislike. So yeah. you're gonna, like, take a lot of potential, like, probably, like, income away from people, right, actually? Um, your income depends on your view time, your watch time, how much it's recommended gets based on a lot of different al uh, algorithm things as well. But it, it definitely does help if people click in, people click in. No, I'm not, I'm not a sub. Like, do I look oh. like I'm submissive to anybody? She'll say a tiny bit more, but 
I don't have very much in the way of knowledge and education in the field of um, dominant relationships and anything surrounding that area. But my instinct tells me that at some point they watched the movie Fifty Shades of Grey and decided they knew what it was. And that's, that's sort of the limit of their exposure. That's the sense I get from the things she's been saying. She said something about a subcontract uh, at one point. And I remember someone being like, ooh, and they said the shock factor, but you're like... Uh... There's probably some things I'm not telling you for a moment, right? She'll tell us later and then she'll forget she's told us and then she'll lie about it and then she'll say she didn't say it. But, uh, but probably, yeah. I'm probably the most submissive to him and than any other relationships. I don't know why. Please stop using words when you don't understand them. Please. Please, because it's cringe. Just, I've never been... Any men I've chosen to be in relationships with in the past have always been more submissive. Like, more, uh... What would the word be? I don't know. I'm not the this word This is like laundry some. stain. I swear, like, the soap stained my... Oh, you want to see my new bra? No. Wait. Why would I... I don't want to see oh, that. Yeah, nice looking. <sighs> no, I just want to tuck it in. Also, I don't think it's a coincidence that when she starts talking about her relationship with Nada, which we definitely weren't going to talk about, the next thing she thinks to do is flash her boobs to the camera. Oh, I'm freezing. Oh. Actually, I am going to turn the heat on. I am going to turn the uh, fireplace on. <laughs> I just can't stop thinking about food. Oh my god. I'll see you guys in a few hours. <laughs> Okay, and that's the end of that. I left that in just because it was another reminder of the bill. She was asking, is leaving the fire on all night going to be that expensive? Because I do get the sense the bills have shot up. All right, guys, I'm going to go and cut out a ton of the shit that I've said in this because it's ridiculously long considering the video itself was only about 12 minutes. <laughs> I'm going to let you go. Uh, I Like I said, I'm going to Dubai on Friday. I was going to film just like a makeup look or something so I could uh, schedule it and have something go up while I was away. Uh, but uh, I was hormonal and I had like just a big spot right there and one right there. And I was like, dude, I like, I very, very rarely break out occasionally hormonally, but even then really not very much. I'll get a tiny thing here and just right in the middle of the chin and right there. Like, I did my time, body. I'm not a teenager anymore, what's going on? So I couldn't film them earlier this week. They've healed up enough now, I can probably do something with it. But um, if I get it done, I'll schedule it and you'll get that at some point. But you may not have anything while I'm, Dubai, uh, while I'm in Dubai, I'm not sure. If I get bored in the night and I've filmed something good, I might just declare the phone off, who knows? But. Uh, if you get nothing, that is why, and I guess I will see you after the trip. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a lovely evening. Like, dislike, it all helps. <laughs> but whatever you choose to do, I will see you next time.